everybody, welcome back to another edition of Gaming with Jim Bob Fred. This is JPF, and I am going to be covering a lot of stuff on this video today. Why? Because you folks are sending me a ton of questions that if I answered individually, there'd be a whole bunch of 90 second videos. So I'm going to try to cover as much of the stuff as I can. And I just want to say thanks to a bunch of people out there that are asking for this stuff. So we'll start off with uh, Mohammed Morshed Alam. He, he, as well as a, uh, a bunch of other folks, um, and, and I'll get to your names eventually, I promise, are just asking, how do they change states permanently? So uh, what I'm gonna do real quick is on my main account, I'm gonna show you where to go to find out if you're not a new account. I'm also, one of the questions I'm gonna be answering today is how to create an alternate account. Um, that alt account request came from a bunch of folks, but AJ Fisher and uh, Vivek Kumar uh, were the last two people to request it. So I'm going to big shout out to those guys. Thanks very much for asking. And just in general, you know, I want to thank everybody that's out there giving uh, such nice comments to the videos. It's really rare that I get a, 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 a thumbs down on one of my videos. And, uh, and I just think that you all are gracious and uh, a really respectable group of people that are out there playing West game. I just appreciate it. Um, I've only had to block one or two people just because, um, as you all know, I like to keep this family friendly and kid friendly and the language they use uh, isn't what I consider appropriate. Um, not that what you have to say is not important, folks, but the way you say it is not something I want to perpetuate out into the world in general. So a uh, big shout out to Goddess 77 and Smack Girl. They're from the survivors, uh, lone survivors in S3. Uh, I I'm gonna keep the videos coming just like you asked, but I really appreciate your, your kind words. All right, so we're gonna cover um, uh, March size. Hopefully uh, Ben Katesh du jury will get his answers, question answered. Um, I might talk about hyper farming, but I'm actually gonna go through a little tutorial on on, on how I recommend people start their game. So this particular video is for new people. All you people that have been around for a long time, please add your comments. I'm gonna miss a ton of stuff, but help me grow the community, you guys. You know, if someone asks a question, and for those of you that have already been answering questions that other people ask, man, I appreciate it. We're all, we're all making this better as we go. If you're not new, you know that these folks, uh, the developers have done a lot of up, upgrading and updating and a lot of really cool stuff. And uh, I just think it's important that we acknowledge that they're doing, like they now have a new pack, a new subscription pack. Oh man, I gotta cover this real quick. Whoops, that's not what I want. I'm gonna go here and end my town. If you wanna see what the subscriptions are and where they're at, you just go over here to your little present with the hat on it in the lower right hand corner and click on it, right? You click on that bad boy and it shows you your super chest, which you've been using for um, uh, battle pass all along. Um, then there's the supply station here. This is where you can always come in and, and, and find whatever uh, daily supplies and other subscriptions they have. But man, this new subscription, this monthly card, this is an amazing subscription. It fixes so many issues that people have with the game. Like everybody forgets to put a shield on every once in a while. It's $10 a month. And if I understand this correctly, now you get in here and you read it, right? I got it right away because I get the $10 a month subscription thing anyhow, right? Um, but this one is kind of cool. This one gives you a 12 hour offline pea shield, food production, an additional uh, million uh, protection for food, wood, stone, iron. Your, it increases your total reviving capacity from a max of 150 to 200. But what's really cool about this is the, um, if you get it, if your shield goes off while you're, if your drive shield drops while you're offline, man, we got a thunderstorm coming here. I hope it's not bleeding through in here. But if your shield drops when you go offline and someone attacks you, the first time you're defeated, the first time you're defeated, you, your a shield goes up. Like they can't just continue hitting you and zeroing you because your shield came came off while you're out there. Man, it's a really cool subscription. I'm, I'm, I was excited to see it. I didn't waste any time getting it. But I'm a pay to play player. If you're not, I, I just stay shielded. That's all I can say. But that was a really cool subscription. I got it without hesitation or reservation. And I think if you all are pay to play players out there, or you just want to protect your your time and your investment, it's worth 10 bucks a month. I don't know what that's like, 30 cents a day or something. I don't know, but it ain't bad, 35 cents a day. 
at any rate, all right. People keep asking me, how can I change states? The first part of that answer is, it depends. Like all things in West game, everything depends. If you're a brand new player and your town center, that's this building right here, the big building in the top left-hand corner of your in-city view is TC5 or below, or level five and below, you're still in that beginning mode and you can, you can, uh, port to any state you want that's out there. I think there's 36 states right now. An easy way to do that is if you know which state you want to go to, go to your big uh, map view here, and in the top right-hand corner, there's a little magnifying glass. Just click on that puppy. I'm, I'm state 33 right now, but let's just say I want to go to state 36. I can't because it's closed for migration for me. But I'm just gonna click the go button here. Now I'm, now I'm in state 36. That's one way to do it. You can find anywhere on the map you want. When you click the little map up here, the third, fourth icon from the right in the top right hand corner, this gives you a map of the current state that you're in. And if you know that you want to be by Dallas County, for instance, so I can just click over by Dallas County and click on any square you want. I can't move my town here because I can't. Oh, actually I could because I can actually change. If I tried right now, I. I could not because this state is protected from getting other people from jumping in there. But if you're brand new and you want to go from 36 to 35 or to 2 or whatever, just click on the square you want. Your game comes with an automatic port. You just click it, move your city there, and you've just changed states. It's as simple as that. But that's for people that are brand new. For those of you that are not brand new, First, you have to find out if your state is eligible to move. You do that by coming down into your events icon on the lower left-hand side, right above your city map thing there. And in the lower left-hand corner of the events page is a little calendar. Click on that bad boy. Not only does it tell you about all of the events that are happening that week for you, but if you scroll down, you'll see this little if it's a month that allows you to do permanent state moves, this blue one that says perm, when you click on it, it expands out the permanent state moves on 8-4 for 20 hours, people were able to move. And it tells you states right here at the end, states S, state one through state 35 were allowed to change states, okay? And you do that the same way, you have to uh, have a migration scroll. Those cost four or five thousand gold. One scroll will get you if you're not in the top 50. Top 50 players moving into the state. So um, if you get someone who has uh, 400 million might moving into a, one of these new states, that might be the very first most powerful uh, person moving into that state. It's going to cost you a lot more migration scrolls than the one that it takes if you're 51 or lower. So depending on what your power is going to be in the state you're trying to move to, it could cost you from one to, I think, over 100 migration scrolls. Could be very expensive for you folks. But that's how you migrate. It's super simple. It's not a big deal. But unless you don't, and, and if you don't know, it's a big deal. But now you know. So that's how you, tra that's how you change states. The next question that I've had a lot of lately is how do I create an alternative account? Um, well, the easiest way to do it now is in the lower center portion of your screen at the bottom, you click the more button on your little sprocket. And the second icon from the left on the top is your account. You simply click it. Now, if you have not um, done a bind account yet, if you've not bound your account to an email, then this screen looks different for you. It'll say, uh, bind current account, bind account, and, and login information. You have to bind it. What that means is you're attaching your account that you're playing to an email, to your personal data, that kind of stuff. So that if you, if you for any reason, lose the app or access to that account, that information helps you go to the developers and get your access back. They'll know it's bound to you and they'll help you get your password reset or whatever it takes. If you don't bind it and you leave, it's gone. You're not coming back to it. So make sure you bind it. I've already bound my account. So what I'm gonna do is I, 
I'm going to create a new account real quick. I'm gonna, in order for me to do that, I, I have to actually have to quick click switch account. <coughs> excuse me, excuse me. And it says, are you sure? Because if I click the yes button and it's not bound, I'm losing that account. But I've already bound it, so I'm going to click yes. And you'll see you have three different options down here. You have a login, start new game, and help. To create a new account, you just click start new game. I'm going to say yes. And boom, it's starting a brand new game for me from scratch. <coughs> now, ooh, this is just like any of you that started the brand new game. You're starting from the beginning and I have to go through the tutorial. There's no getting past it. You just got to do it. I wish I could click through it faster. I'll go through it as fast as I can to show you some of the other stuff that, that folks are asking. So I'm just gonna, you went through this. I'm not gonna read it all. Oh no, I'm getting bombed. The Calvary's coming. Daily's gang comes again. Yeah, Daily's gang, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Call for backups. Now it's gonna force me to make a barrack. Now I did another video, you know, uh, why you only need one barracks and unlocking troops really quick. The truth of the matter is you only have to have one of any building in this game. But the real reason why I say you only need one barrack, <coughs> man, I'm coughing like crazy. Well, they want me to train some people. How many? Doesn't matter. Oh, and I can't get past it. All right, I'll just click through as fast as I can everything that I can do and get to the point where I can show you why you only need one barrack or why you want multiple hospitals or why you want multiple cabins or why you want multiple everythings or minimum of everything. It's like I only have one defense factory, right? And I've had I've said that before and, and people have left messages like, you forgot to say, talk about the bonus you get when your defensive factory gets up to level 21 and above. Well, yeah, you're right, I didn't mention it. We must be Town Center, bus. what am I going to do here? I have drafted a development plan. Yeah, all right, fine. All right, I'm going to build a cabin. Let's get them all built real quick. And I'll show you why I only have one defensive factory as soon as I get it opened here, right? So as, as you start building your new town, new people, as you're building your new town, follow this tutorial. It's going to help you get moving in the right direction. But as soon as you're able to, and I'll show you here in a second what I mean, like during the tutorial, you can't access the information on these buildings at all. So uh, what happens, I think for a lot of people is they just follow the tutorial. They click all the little buttons where the yellow arrows go in. They don't do any more or less than what the developers threw together from the get go, which is fine. The developers just need to get you started and that's what they've done. And oh, by the way, I think the developers have done a bang up job of making sure that a free to play player can actually do well um, if they do all the events that they, they they have put in here for you to do. When I say do all the events, I mean um, participate in Battle Pass every day when it's an open when it's an open event and different events. Participate in Carnival. Participate in the events. Boss, Heck, in most cases, you got nothing to lose when you're participating in a developer-created event. Like, it's really hard to lose troops. In most cases, you get 80, 90, or 100 percent of your troops back. So it's a it's a great opportunity for people to um, to get out there and learn how to fight against one another. And that's the end of the, at the end of the day. It's the boils down to it. it's a war game. If you downloaded this game, it's because you want to be playing a war game. That means you should be out attacking people. That means that you should be defending. It means that you should be growing and, and, and participating and being part of the West Game community at large, but especially within your own, your your very own alliance. Um, it's gonna make me join an alliance here in a minute, and I'm gonna tell you how to make sure that you get into the right alliance. Don't just do what the developers want you to do to join an alliance. I'm gonna show you, get up into one of the top tier alliances, right? That's the most important thing to do. If I'm in state, um, 56 right now i'm probably going to choose the third or fourth alliance because i've actually practiced the, doing this video a couple times look at all the free stuff i just got man always do these always 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 i guess un unless you get to the point where you're spending enough money or you have enough resources that you don't want to do them but it's free it's free all right so they're recommended i join this uvar 
Alliance. I don't want to. You, as a new player, probably did. You probably clicked join. Well, you might not want to do that, but I'm going to. I'm going to join their alliance real quick. But it's not a top tier alliance. They never ask Austin, you to join a top tier alliance. alliance. Although, they got 95 players. We wanted the same thing. How do you know if you're in a top tier alliance? Well, we'll talk about that in a minute, too. <laughs> Excuse me. Coughing like crazy. Should have had some water or something. Should have had some water. At any, at any rate. So you can figure out who the top tier alliances are again by coming down to your more button, clicking on rank, going to alliance and, and usually the top forces are gonna have the top alliance. You see AH seems to be one of the top alliance. People have top forces, 2.5 million troops on that already. So AH is an alliance you might wanna try to get to. How would you do that? Well, first you have to leave the alliance you're in. And the way you do that is you come back down to um, the bottom part of your screen where it says Alliance and you click it. Then you scroll down until you see, I'm going to help a couple of these Alliance people because I just joined their Alliance. Now scroll down to where it says Manage and now I'm going to just leave Alliance. Sorry folks, for those of you in this Alliance that I'm currently in, it was just temporary. It's nothing personal. I'm just doing a video for crying out loud. <laughs> and then I leave. Now, anytime, you'll see the Alliance button down here has a little exclamation point on it, and a little, a little red dot in the corner. Anytime I click on this, it's gonna say, hey, join an Alliance. It's a good idea to be an Alliance, and it is. So I'm gonna click OK, and now they're making a recommendation of, for a whole bunch of different Alliances, but I'm not interested in, in those yet. I could also create my own Alliance. You look down here in the, um, about the center of the page and the bottom, and I could create my own. Don't do that either if you're a brand new player. Click on More. Now you can see the top players. Look, DU is in the top, DUE, AH, the people who have the, the, the highest level uh, force um, in there. So, um, and then you got MEH, these are top three alliances. I recommend that you try to get in any one of the top five. Right, so I'm gonna click on, I'm gonna click on one of the top five. I'll actually click on uh, the fifth one here, whoever's the fifth one, let's count down. One, two, three, four, five. Once you click on these, you can check them out. Just click the check button. And then you click on the members button and you can see what their members look like. This Lady Grey Wolf is uh, only 33,000 force. Probably not an active leader, or at least not the kind of leader you want to be in right away. Um, if this Blackhawk with 220,000 power or force was, was leading you, like that's a leader who's playing the game, get involved with that alliance, not a bad idea. You also want to check to see if they've changed their names. This Cowboy 7 M O I U person, although they've been playing in their 86,000 force, they have not changed their name and likely are going to be um, ejected from the Alliance if they don't change that soon. A lot of Alliances will say, change your name to a real name. Let's see if the top Alliance has that listed on their board here. Now we need 40,000 to join on that one. Please change cow, cowboy prison ID name. <laughs> we like to know who you are. So the second alliance, these uh, um, A hats folks are. They're saying change your name, right? And these guys will say experienced fighters, minimum twenty thousand forces, no tiling. So these guys are telling you. So look at the alliances and see which ones you might want to be in, right? So I'm just going to pick the wolf pack here, and I'm going to request to join. Boom, I'm in a top five alliance. It was that simple. I'm going to try to follow the rules because they said, follow our rules. There's 36 people in here. All right, anyway, so I'm in that alliance. Now I'll start doing all these things they want me to do. Build a logging camp. Hit the free button. Go through this stuff. I'm just going to kind of cruise through this really quick till I can get through some of the bigger buildings that we want. There are four resource buildings. You have the... the um, the quarry that builds that gets you a stone. There's a mine that gets you iron. That'll be the next one that I build. Going through the tutorial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna click it. Go. The reality in this game is you only need one of each of these. But all of these little empty square building spots on here. They're there for you to build stuff on too. Like you might want to have an account that has a lot of quarries, right? So you can build another one. Right? Because you're going to have to build two of those eventually anyway. 
Now, down here, you'll see that every time I do this stuff, what do I get here for mail? What's going on? Join the Alliance. Nice. There's a claim that gift, 100 gold. I'll take it. What is he doing here? I'm going to claim another gift. I'm not sure what it was. What was it? More gold. Nice. Claim your gifts. And that's what I mean by this quest button down here. The center one. See, there's 12 things on there. I've done 12 things that I can click. I can collect a bunch of resources for stuff I've done. And I can start some of these quests. Right? And you want to join an alliance because that gives you the ability to do some alliance quests. The more of these you complete, the more free stuff you get. That's just the way that rolls. All right. Now, what's next? All right. Build a warehouse. A warehouse is where you store all your resources when you're either gathering or you're building them from your... Um, Alliance buildings, um, or you're taking them from other players. There's lots of ways to get them. The cheapest way to farm and get resources is to take them from other players who fail to secure their account with a shield when they're not online. Right? It's a war game. It's legit. That's not bullying, by the way. Here is our academy. A lot of people complain about players that are being bullies because they're getting hit by someone who is significantly more powerful than them. Well. It's not their fault that they're significantly more powerful than you. If you're getting hit by them, it's your fault for not camping your your troops or giving them a reason to hit you by holding a lot of resources or holding a sheriff without a shield. So shield, shelter, camp your troops, do whatever you got to do to protect those things, man. You just want to do that. Uh, again, just follow, follow the instructions for this first portion of the thing. Let, let me see if... Um, all right, I can do that for free. What's going on here? I want to go. Wanna, oh, I, I, all I do is update, upgrade that. I right, build my hospital now. Build free. All right. So, in this case, this is the academy. That's where it teaches us to build stuff. So, when you're out fighting people, your injured troops come into your hospital. Anytime you want to know what a building does, lower left-hand corner, you click on the building, there's an eye there that gives you the information behind the building. So I have one level one hospital, so 200 of my troops, if I'm in a fight, are going to go into the hospital. The rest die or go into the monument. If I had two level one hospitals, then each one would hold 200 for a total capacity of 400. But you always want to know what your buildings do for you. Now, if I click on this cabin, i do the same thing. Check this information out. One level one cabin produces um, 25 silver per hour. Silver is really important in this game as you progress. So you want to create as much of this as you can. It gives you a 1% troop training speed discount. Takes 1% less time. And the silver capacity is 2,000. Now, as you scroll down here, you'll see when you hit level 21, that's a 25%. And 525 per hour. And 580. Everything in this game revolves right now around level 21 because that's what you need to be at minimum to unlock the highest tier troops in this game, right? So I've already built, oh, so I'm gonna collect that hospital I just built, a sentry station. Blah. Let's do it. Build. Build. I just want to get to this why you only need one barrack. Let's, let me click on that bad boy right now. So I'm on the barrack that I built with the giving card of the game and I'm looking at the information that it has in here. So I have one level one barrack so I can train up to 35 new troops at a time. If I have two, two level one uh, barracks, I could train 70 at one time. Now, when you, when you go to train them, there's a time constraint. It's gonna take the same amount of time. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm just gonna go back here and I'm gonna go ahead and train. 35 skirmishers I have 35 there it's going to take eight minutes and 40 seconds all right now if i build another barrack which i will do right now oh let me get up here to barrack build it i don't recommend that you do this necessarily unless you want to um, build a lot of troops at one time at the beginning part of your game, and it's not a bad idea to do that either. Just eventually you're going to get to the point where you're making a gazillion troops at one time and it just takes forever, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So I've been increasing my share of stuff here. Now, I'm not going to save this account, so it's going to be one in here that just 
feeds everybody else some RSS. So now um, I'm gonna go back in here. I'm gonna speed up these, these troops that we've already started training. Um, can I get it done quick enough? Yeah, two, three minutes. You know, one minute. Now wait 43 seconds ish for those to finish training, and I'll I'll make my point here in a second. Um, what's next? Defensive factory. So your defensive factory is what defends your city. It also helps you make traps. I'm not a big trap playing guy, so a lot of people ask me questions about traps. I just don't have answers because I don't like traps. They're way expensive, super expensive to build. They take forever to to um to heal. So. Um, I just don't have a lot of traps. I build traps for Battle Pass. That's about all I do. Go ahead and build this uh, Blacksmith Station. Blacksmith's where you forge gear and that kind of stuff. All right, so what's happened here? Now I see little, little hats above these two barracks that I built. Remember, a second ago I could build 35 because I had one level one barracks. Now if I want to train them, um, I'll just do some skirmishers. You see, it's twice that. It's 70. But you also see the time is 1720. So I can build twice as many, but it's still, it takes twice as long as well. Which isn't necessarily, again, terrible, unless you get down to this, bat, when you get down here and you're, you're building T4s and they take forever, right? But the reality is, the reality is, when you hit level 21, and you're building 6,000 T4 troops, that takes about a day. So if you're doing 12,000, it's still gonna take two days, right? Where the difference is, and this is what I like to do, is when I have these um, uh, cabins, you look at what a cabin does, is it decreases training speed, the more of these I have. And each one of them creates silver. So the more cabins I have, the less time it takes to train the troops that I'm training. And even though it's 6,000, if it takes someone who who only has a few of these, like so, so if they have one of these at level uh, 21 and they can do 6,000 troops, it's gonna take it um, um, a full 24 hours plus, right? But if I have 10 of these at 21, this bonus, is gonna decrease 25% of that time for each one of these that I have. So it really decreases your time significantly. So that's the big deal. And that's why I go with a lot more um, cabins than anything else. So brand new account, and you'll see up here in the top right-hand corner, um, above my sheriff, there's a little red dot in the top left-hand corner. That means, anytime you see a red dot, that means there's something that you can do. Let me help these folks out. All right, let's go see what they want me to do. They want me to spend some skill points. Well, the green box over here under, above the, the weapon means that I got a weapon I should have donned earlier. That's gonna reduce construction time by two minutes to see over in the top right-hand corner just by um, putting on this ch chief's revolver. I'm gonna save two minutes on anything that I'm constructing. Skill points over here has a 10 on it. Click on those bad boys and then um, what I do here and I do this all the time, and I'll show you the same thing that I do in the, in the academy to get to the unlocking stuff quick, right? Is I don't worry about the, the thing that's highlighted, the thing that I can do. I look for the next thing that I want to do. And in this case, it would be increasing my research speed. So if I click on it, it's going to tell me um, I need two more points for troop attack and two more points for food production before this unlocks. And again, like all other cases, when I get these, they tell you what the bonuses are, right? When you click on the eye, what the what the what that what that's all about. So, if I need two more troop attack, I'll just put two in here, and I need two more food production. I'll put two in here, and you'll see that now my research speed has been unlocked, and I can up, put a point in there. That way, I'm not spending a lot of time going somewhere else. And if you come down here, if I want to do um, ranged attack number one, it tells me I need five more points of cavalry attack. That's this one here. If I click that, I need five more points. So if you go from starting on the right and working your way back, it tells you the only the things that you need to un unlock to get the one that you want unlocked done. The same thing applies in a really good way for you um, with your uh, academy. 
Like everybody says, how can I unlock my troops super fast? Well, when you go to research, unlocking troops happens here in this combat tab. You click on the combat tab, and I know right off the bat I could start researching scout or troop training speed because they're white and everything else is gray. But if I want to know what it's going to take to unlock, well, the next tier two, uh, the tier two troops, right? So unlock gunmen, that's a tier two, that's the next level troop. In order for me to do that, I have to have cowboy infantry defense at one and my academy, the building itself has to be at level eight. So if all I do is focus on those two things for my research for the next couple of days, that's how I'll get to unlocking my next um, tier two troop. The same thing applies if you come all the way down here. I'm just gonna make sure that I say this once. If I wanna unlock tier four, carbine riders, I click on it, it's gonna tell me that I have a whole bunch of things that have to be at 10. But one of the things they don't say is that I have to have um, uh, elite guard done. Right? I do have to have a couple of these done. So as you work back through the stuff, you're going to get T4 unlocked without having everything in front of it unlocked. Um, most everything, yes, but not everything. So always start from where you want to go. Cowboy Cavalry Attack or uh, Shock Riders. Tells me I got to have Cowboy Cavalry Attack at 3, Academy at 15. So this gives you a clue of where you want to go. Um, uh, uh, one of the, my favorite authors, um, said in one of his books, begin with the end in mind. So anytime you're playing the game, just figure out where you want to be at the end and then work backwards to figure out what you got to do to get there. It's going to save you a ton of resources and a ton of time and avoid spending a lot of time and effort doing something that you may not have to do to get to the end that you have in mind. So, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to jump out of this right now. Uh, I'll have another tutorial for building a, a brand new uh, town later on. You can also check out some of my other videos that talks about uh, my town setups and why I make the recommendations that I do. But the, the short tips were this is how you create an additional account. This would be an alt account. Now, same thing applies. I want to go back to my main. I go back to uh, the sprocket on the bottom. I click account. This is where I'm telling you it has to bind stuff. Bind the new account, bind an existing account, or log in with an existing account. It's going to tell me as soon as I click this. If I do this, I won't have access to this. You're using a visitor account, which is not binded. If you log into your Lei account now, the history will be lost. Are you sure you want to log in? In my case, I do. I don't want an extra account right now. Not that you all are looking at. It goes back to this initial page that I went to when I did it. If you look right next to this email address, there's a little cowboy with a hat on it. You click that. Now I can choose whichever account I want to go back to. Just click the login button, it's gonna take me right back to my main. Super, super cool, easy stuff. And I don't know how many accounts you can have in there. Someone told me they had six and they're able to swap back and forth between them all pretty quickly. So, um, AJ and Vivek, that's your alt accounts thing. <laughs> New people that wanna know how to change states, that's covered. Uh, hyper farming I didn't cover. Hyper farming is nothing more than when you build those resource buildings, you build a whole bunch of them of one type, and then you can really produce a lot of that stuff, right? Um, but you only protect what, you can only build up to a max of what you can keep, then you, you move that over into your Alliance Warehouse or into a bank if you guys have one of those, right? Um, merch size. People want to know how to increase their merch size. Generally speaking, with merch size, you have to increase your command center, right? Um, and command center here tells you your, oops, not your not your command center, what am I talking about? Your stinking town center. Your town center gives you march size. So a level one town center, you can march with a thousand troops, you go all the way to the bottom. At a level 26, you can march with 500,000 troops, right? And at level 21, you get some pretty good bonuses and those go up as well, march speed and some other stuff. He said, he also wanted, are there other ways to increase march size? Absolutely. There's almost always more than one way to do that. And we'll cover that by going into our heroes selection. And it just so happens that if you have Elizabeth unlocked and you click on Elizabeth, each one of these little buttons 
tells you if I increase it with, um, well, let me just show you one that I have here. If you got a little try, a little plus sign, green plus sign in there, it means that you can upgrade that by using Hero Insights. Somebody asked me, how do you use Hero Insights and what are they for? Now, if I increase this, if I upgrade it right now, I'm gonna take my reduced range training consumption. It's currently at 9.49%. It'll increase it to 10.07. If I spend 20 of my 252 Hero Insights, that's where you use them. But I wanna say one of her things here Increases, is it not her? It's not her. Just make sure as I go through here. If it's not her, maybe it's the next gal. Some of these heroes actually increase March size. I think, apparently not. I thought for sure it was in there. I went looking and the ones I thought it was, it wasn't. At any rate, always look for the things. And the last thing I'll do this is if, sometimes your gear might do it. Let's just go into the forge and I'll show you how to determine whether or not um, it covers that in there. You can always go to a filter. And let's see if there's a March size in here. Others. Oh. Uh, there's nothing under others. Isn't that awesome? Select all. Go through these and see if there's anything that increases March. Hey, for those of you watching, if you know what increases March size, just put a note in the comments for crying out loud. Never fails that when I'm recording, I forget exactly what it was I wanted to show and I'm blowing it now. That said, I've covered everything in this video that I wanted to originally cover. I hope I answered a bunch of your questions. Thanks again, everybody, for leaving your comments. Keep those questions coming. And uh, as a community, everybody just answer them if you know the answers. I'm not a professional West game player. I'm not a professional West game YouTuber. I'm just trying to put some tutorials out there to help the, the folks that are trying to, to get along. As always, it's a war game. If you're not out there fighting, or if you're not out there defending, you probably picked the wrong kind of game. Remember the only real bullies on this game, I wanna cover that real quick. You can be bullied in, in a virtual world and if somebody is bullying you verbally, actually verbally bullying you, um, they're gonna be doing it in a lot of different ways. But let me just say, this uh, Carlos cat right here from ECMC, he's one of the coolest guys in this state. I really like him a lot. But if, if this person was saying stuff to me that I didn't wanna see, and I felt as though I was being cyber bullied, you just click on their little icon here, you go to view player. Anytime you're viewing the player, this will pop up and in the top right hand corner over here, right next to their little Pinocchio picture or whatever it is, there's a little button. It's got a little slash through. You can barely see it, but if you click it, it gives you the opportunity to block the player. If you click okay, they're blocked. Now I'm not gonna block Carlos because the worst thing Carlos has ever done to me is zero me. <laughs> and that's part of the game. But that's how you get rid of people that are being obnoxious and you don't wanna deal with them. I treat this game like a family game. I never know, I never presume to know who's on the other end of, of a picture, right? Or in a chat box. We have old folks like me, we have really young folks playing and I think we all need to be respectful of what's out there. <laughs> too often, too many people look at this as a virtual world and hide behind the anonymity of, an, of, a, of the virtual world and do and say things that they would never do um, in real life. So if that's happening, you have a means for blocking them. Folks, um, enjoy your games. Uh, Remember to smash that like button. If you haven't already subscribed, subscribe, and that helps me know that the content I'm putting out is the content you're wanting to see. Um, and share it with your friends that are playing West Game. Um, hopefully I'll be doing some live streaming pretty soon and it will be an AVA event. That said, everybody out there, have fun, be safe. <laughs> and I'll watch you later. It's Jim Buck, Fred out.